Hi, in this session, I'm going to show you how to create a Gantt chart that takes into account work days only. So, say for example, we have this Gantt chart and we want it to only include work days as it charts out the amount of time it takes for each task. So, in our example, let's say that we're starting from 325 2013, March 25th to June 25th, and there is a holiday in between. This would be Memorial Day on May 27th. So we see that we have our start dates and the, the duration for each task. And the first start date, we'll see that it, it's just a date here. And then we have our number, number of days it takes. But for the subsequent rows here, so there's a formula here that actually calculates the duration taken and adds it to the start date and removes the non-work days, such as the Saturday and Sunday, and also potentially the holidays. So the way that the formula works, let me bring up the insert function window here. You can see that the arguments that you need to put in is a start date. So for this example in cell B3, we're looking at the start date of B2, which is this one, and we're adding the days, which is C2 here. So we're adding three days to here, and we're going to add that holiday. So I'll explain the holiday a little bit later, but basically, what we've done here is it's added 25, 325, and you added three days, it would be 328. So where the weekend comes into play, you can see here, well, let me let me go ahead and describe the holiday and weekend. So we have a holiday here in, on 527. So let me go ahead and bring up a calendar. So with 527, it, it basically impacts uh, between task 5 and 6. So here we have task 5. Oops, let me bring up the, the calendar here. We have task 5 and it takes 15 days. So 5, 6 would be here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the 15th day is on the 24th. You can see here the next task starts on the 28th. So what happens is it did not include the weekend, the 25th and 26th, and it didn't include the holiday, the 27th. And it started the next task on the 28th. So that is how you would create it in a formula to supply the chart elements here for the Gantt chart. So let me go ahead and show you how to create this. So first off, let me go ahead and just copy this. Let me copy this uh, this table and this holiday here. Let me do a command control C to copy, bring it into this other sheet and do a control V to paste. So what we need to do is we want to insert a bar chart. And so I'm going to go up here and do insert bar and we want to insert a stacked bar chart. So once I insert this bar chart, it's going to take some of the data already. Excel tries to guess and take the data in here. It really is not the way we want it. So we're going to there's there's several ways that we can modify this. We can actually modify it within the table here or we can go into the design tab and under select data to modify it. So I'm going to go use this way. I'm going to go with select data. It'll bring up the select data source window and the the horizontal axis labels here we don't want the date we just want the the task. So what I'm going to do is go and edit that and here you can see that it's selected this area, this range. We only want this range selected. So I'm just since this is highlighted already, I'm just going to go ahead and select this range. Left mouse click and hold and just drag it down. You can see it's dragged from A2 to A11. And click OK. And now we have let me move this over here. Now we have our axis labels for the Y axis done correctly. Now the other thing I wanted to add is it's already added the duration uh, the duration series and the values. What I wanted to also add is the start date. So I'm going to go ahead and click add and the series name is going to be the start date and the series values, let me go ahead and get rid of that delete, and the series value is going to be cell B2 to B11, basically the dates. And I'm going to click OK and I can just click OK here. Now you can see what, ha what has happened is that the start date values have kind of just clobbered the duration. Basically, what I want to do, let me go ahead and select this. Actually, I can just go into select data. What I really want, what I want to do is have the start date um, come first. So let me go ahead and 
click that and just bring it up or you can just click the duration and bring it down since there's only two values here so I'm going to click OK and what you see now is you have the start date and the duration kind of um, together not not overlapping not one overlapping the other so what I want to also do is you can see here that the task here are kind of reversed. I want to have task one be the starting as we read, read from top down. But this is not going top down, it's going bottom up. So what I want to do is click on the y-axis here. You can see it's selected. Right click, go into format chart area. Whoops. Let me go ahead and right click that. Format axis. See now that's the axis, not the chart area. And what I want to do is have the categories in reverse order. Reverse order. So I'll click on that click OK you can see that's changed now. Now another thing I want to do is I don't want to see this I don't want to see the legend. Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of the legend. Select that and press delete and I don't want to see this start date line. I want to make that invisible because I just want to see the durations because the durations start in 325. You can see that uh, there's another kind of formatting that we need to take care of here because there's just too much uh, they, they're too large and it's kind of clobbering it so what I want to do first, let's go ahead and just change these lines and we can select that, you can see it's selected here right click and go into format data series and with the fill color I, want, I don't want to fill so I'll just select that radio button click close and you can see now it's gone so another way, and some more formatting that we want to do is since this is kind of large we want to kind of maybe align that a little bit maybe we'll make it, we'll go under, uh, we'll click the format, click the axis go into form an axis and with alignment maybe we want to have it go up and down so we'll have that uh, rotate all text 270 degrees now you see when we've done that basically the chart area is not big enough so what we can do is we can select the chart in whoops so we can select the chart itself you can see now the chart area here is selected we can just move that down a little bit so at least we can see the numbers here and we can maybe adjust the size here. Another thing that we want to look at is let's say that we want to have the the chart or the axis values uh, have a gap of seven days. Right now it doesn't. You can see that there's a gap of let's see what 15 to more than seven days probably about 20 days. Let's see 15 to 30. What I can do here is select the axis, right click and go to format axis and change the major unit, uh, it was 20 days, so instead of 20 days, make that 7 days. So it's going to have it, uh, it's going to separate out, it out 7 days. Also, one thing we want to change is, see how this value started out at 325? Well, we don't need all this empty space here, and what we can do is we can bring that in. We don't need. We don't. We can have it start at around 325, 323. Now the way that Excel works in this instance is it looks at the serial number value. So dates are in Excel in the back end. When you, it recognizes dates as a serial number. So what I mean by that is if we look, click on this date, and right click it and go under Format Cells, and go into General. The way that Excel sees it in the back end is it sees it as a number. So this date, 325-2013, is 41.358 in Excel. So we just want to remember that. And basically, that is 41,358 days from January 1st, 1900. So in, in Excel, uh, all dates start at that date. Uh, that's how uh, the date serialization works. If you do a Google search for how dates are, are, are rendered in Excel, you'll get a good explanation about that. So basically that's how it, that works. So just remember this number 41358 or maybe we'll just shorten it to 41350. And let's see, and I'll go ahead and, oops, let me go ahead and undo it. And go on, now I click the access, go under Format Access, Format Access, and the minimum, I want to change that to 41350. So it move, it kind of removes, it starts it off closer to this date. So we can click close. You can see that it's done that now. So that has made the Gantt chart a little bit more readable. Let me go ahead and also get rid of these grid lines because I like to have it a little more clean. So I just click it and you can see the grid lines are selected. 
and just press delete. Now another thing to think about is how this workday function uh, works. So I mentioned that before uh, we have our values. Let me bring up the answered function window. We have our start date, we have the days that it's going to add to the start date, and we have holidays. So in this instance, we have only selected one holiday here. And it, 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 it looks for that value in, in cell A16, which is this one right here. So let's say, for example, that our, our tasks span, it could span a time period that includes another, another holiday. Let's say, for example, uh, July 4th. I think July 4th, we can enter that in there. Right, so July fourth is on a Thursday, and let's say that we want to let's spread out some of these to include July fourth. So let's make this maybe ten days, and that will bring it to July fourth. So what happens here is it's going to go ten days, right? So six twenty-four, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's going to start on the next one should be 7 8, right? But since we didn't include July 4th as our holiday in our formula here, it's not going to pick it up. So what we need to do is once we selected that, we probably need to go back into our formula here and include that. So what I can do is I can just select this and I can select these ranges. So we can what you see now is it's picked up A16 to A17. So when it does this too, also I would need to lock these cells. So what I mean is I want to have, I want to make them absolute values. So when it gets copied down, that doesn't change. So I'm going to go ahead and press. Once I have this selected, I'm going to press function or F4. So basically, what F4 does is it puts the dollar signs in front of the letter and numbers. So when I get, it gets copied down, it doesn't change. So I'm going to press Enter. You can see that. This is down here. This is changed, but this one hasn't. So I'm going to go back into the cell and double click the fill handle here, and it's going to copy the formula down. So you can see now it's picked up A16 and A17. As the other cells change, since there's no dollar signs in front of it, when I copy the formula down, you can see that those values changed. It just basically uh, changed, changed in correspondence with the previous cells above the calculations. So now that I've got the two holidays in here, you can see now it's done it correctly, right? It's calculated it correctly here. So what I can see here is 624, you got 10 days, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, skip the 4th, 9, 10, and the next task will start on the 9th. So here we see it started on the 9th, and it's going to reflect here on the Gantt chart. So it starts on the 9th. You can right around here. So this is how you create a Gantt chart for work days only. So we're, we're, we're taking out the Saturdays and Sundays and potential holidays. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a short link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.